Welcome to Spooky History. In today's episode, we're discussing Charles Fort, the inspiration behind the Fortean movement. Remember Fortean TV, hosted by a Harley Davidson riding priest? The 90s were wild. Charles Hoy Fort was born in Albany, New York in 1874. From a fairly impoverished background, Fort and his two brothers grew up under the tyrannical rule of his abusive father. When he turned 18, he took the opportunity to flee the family home and gain experience of the wider world. This journey took him to Scotland, England, South Africa, and it was the latter destination where Charles became seriously unwell. Upon his return to New York, he was looked after by childhood friend Anna Filing, who Fort would later marry. Charles tried to carve out a career for himself as a writer, something he would have little success with, only publishing one fiction novel and a number of short stories. His career may have ended had it not been for a relative's death and an admittedly modest inheritance that didn't allow for opulent luxury, but did allow Fort to pursue his interests, which were by now expanding beyond travel and science fiction. In the early 1900s, Fort began cataloguing strange phenomena, something he would go on to describe as damned data, information, evidence, and claims that mainstream science dismissed. Fort saw science as akin to a religion in its dogmatic approach to what it considered the truth. Science has, by appeal to various bases, excluded a multitude of data. One of the examples Fort uses to criticize dogmatic science, his words, is a strange phenomena reportedly first arising in South Africa and Trinidad of strange lights in the sky, lights that continued for several years after. Scientists of the time attributed these events to the eruption of Krakatoa in 1883, but Fort questions this, wondering if that were the case, then why would the sightings begin sometime before the eruption and continue for many years after? If they were anomalies caused by the eruption, they should be localized, temporary, and certainly not occur before the eruption. Fort was also drawn to stories of strange items falling from the sky, animals, stones, and rocks. Items that had no business raining down. One such claim involves rocks falling in France in 1772. The official story that was to account for the raining rocks was that a large boulder had been struck by lightning. Fort points out that this was accepted as the explanation, despite there being other equally or more valid explanations. It was events like this which made Fort skeptical of scientific certainty. He collected together countless thousands of notes, as many as 48,000 he claims to have thrown into the wind in New York. His notes and interest in the weird and strange garnered a lot of support from others interested in that outside of the mainstream scientific view. Fort's own views on whether such phenomena as poltergeists, cryptids, extraterrestrials and the like were real is somewhat of a debated topic. Many suggest that Fort followed, and they themselves also follow, a position of agnostic skepticism, with Edinburgh Fortean Society founder Gordon Rutter describing Forteans as skeptics with a sense of humour. Indeed, Fort's main thrust seemed to be more about challenging what some saw as a cult of science and pointing out that whatever the explanation, these strange phenomena do exist and as real as anything else. Dismissing them or not having a solution to them does not alter that. One example is ball lightning, something that had been hotly debated in scientific communities. Although we still aren't certain of the causes of ball lightning, or that it definitely even exists, more and more people in reputable scientific disciplines now accept that there is something to the occurrence, even if we don't know exactly what that is. It's a very Fortean position to take. Charles Fort discussed ball lightning briefly in his first Fortean book, The Book of the Damned, and linked it to the falling rocks of France. In the monthly weather review, 33-409, there is an account of ball lightning that struck a tree. It made a dent such as a falling object would make. The Book of the Damned was published in 1919, being the first of four books on Fortean topics, and recounts numerous phenomena that would become known as Fortean. After many years of unsuccessful attempts at publication, Fort's friend Theodore Dreiser, himself a renowned author, assisted in getting the book published. In the book, Fort discusses a number of strange topics, and in some cases offers his own take on possible explanations for them, such as random explosions in the sky possibly being caused by dirigibles, as well as explanations for apparent cryptid sightings being misidentified, such as the case of strange track prints having other explanations. Professor Owen, to whom a friend had sent drawings of the prints, writes that there were claw marks. He says that the track was made by a badger. 
Six other witnesses sent letters to this number of the news. One mentioned, but not published, is a notion of a strayed swan. He was also critical of claims relating to dowsing, saying, Now there are as many scientists who believe in dowsing, that the suspicion comes to me that it may be only a myth after all. One of Fort's most famous ideas was the Super Sargasso Sea, some phenomena where all lost items go occasionally to return to Earth via a fall from the sky. We may never know the extent of Fort's writings, as he frequently discarded and destroyed his notes and work in fits of depression. Fort's interest was such that he even moved temporarily to London simply to gain access to the British Museum files. With the publication of the Book of the Damned, Fort became something of a cult icon, and supporters of his work began to regularly meet to discuss the ideas put forward by Fort. Screenwriter Ben Hesch was one of Fort's biggest admirers, stating, I am the first disciple of Charles Fort. Henceforth, I am a Fortean. And this descriptor stuck. Fort himself wasn't a big fan of these societies. Although critical of science, he wasn't dismissive of it, instead concerned that the societies that were springing up in his name would appeal to those who rejected proper and thorough investigation and consideration of claims such as spiritualists. There is some disagreement as to exactly how much of the phenomena Fort believed as genuine versus simply interesting and worthy of further study. His opposition to official groups that would largely attract those less sceptical, combined with his distrust and dislike of authority, led him to distance himself from the new Fortean societies and reject the offer of president of the First Society in New York. Fort has been compared to Robert Ripley, another man of a similar era, who also catalogued strange occurrences, but did so in a less scientifically rigorous way. Charles Fort was neither hard and cynic, nor unquestioning believer in the phenomena he catalogued. Despite that stance, he has been dismissed by more noted skeptics, such as mathematician Martin Gardner, who described Fort as a destructive critic, presenting negative claims without positive accounts. But was that what he was really doing? Fort's relationship with the study of anomalous phenomena is frequently misunderstood and misrepresented. Charles Fort died in 1932, but his legacy lived on through the still-running publication 14 Times and a television series that aired on Britain's Channel 4 in the 1990s. Many people who are drawn to Fort's work might themselves have found themselves the target of his ire, as the very broad church includes people with numerous different stances on the existence of strange phenomena, even those who unquestioningly believe it, and those who cynically reject it as interesting but nonsense. Cataloguing and reporting on things that people believe is very much in our own spirit. We present the stories, and where possible, the evidence on all sides. The production team here at Spooky History consists of atheists, pagans, believers in the spiritual, Catholics, and strong skeptics who don't believe at all, but find the entire topic deeply fascinating. I guess we ourselves are Fortians. I'd like to thank Gordon Rutter of the Edinburgh 14 Society for input on this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and please do have nightmares. Goodbye.